let me just talk about leaving Europe. Uh, the United States in 2008, uh, at, at the famous Bucharest conference, uh, NATO conference, said that Georgia and Ukraine would become part of NATO. This was a major league commitment, and it meant we were going eastward. The Russians weren't coming westward. We were going eastward. We means the United States. The United States foisted the decision to include Ukraine and Georgia on the Europeans, especially the Germans and the French. So we were deeply committed in 2008. Then in 2014, you had this major crisis over Ukraine. It started on February 22nd, 2014. And the question is, what did the United States decide to do? We decided to double down. We didn't decide to go home, right? There's no danger of us going home. This is Imperial America. There's all this talk about Imperial Russia. I'm sorry. Get your adjectives right, ladies and gentlemen. This is Imperial America. We weren't going home. You think Barry Polson, Steve Walt, and John Mearsheimer really matter? We're pimples on the hiney of humanity in the United States, right? Donald Trump. You know, Donald Trump, he came in. He hated NATO, right? He wanted to jump in bed with Vladimir Putin. Uh, and he wanted to pivot to Asia. His instincts were basically right, by the way. Uh, but he was beaten back by the blob. It wasn't even a fair fight. He's the one who in December 2017 decided to arm the Ukrainians. This is a really smart policy, right? You know where that landed up, right? So the whole idea that we would leave Europe and abandon deep engagement was not a serious argument. And oh, by the way, this article was published in early 2021. Joe Biden moved into the White House in early 2021. There's no president in recent history more deeply committed to Ukraine than Joe. He is deeply committed to Ukraine. Uh, so we weren't leaving. Then there's this whole argument that you folks have about Russia being a big threat. Now, Barry and Steve Morrow uh, and Marina, to the extent we could hear her, they were all making it clear that this threat was overblown. And the focus was mainly on capabilities, and they're of course correct. But I want to say a few words about few words about intentions. There is zero evidence that Vladimir Putin was interested in any serious way in recreating the Soviet Union or the Soviet Empire or building a greater Russia. Now, I understand in the West today that this is the mantra that dominates the discourse, but there's no evidence that he said that this was a feasible enterprise, right? There's no question that in his heart, in his heart, he wanted to create a greater Russia. He wanted to bring back the Soviet Union with some modifications in his heart. What was in his head? What was he really thinking and saying? He's made it clear, in my opinion, that he did not think that this was feasible. And furthermore, there is no evidence that he was planning. There's no evidence that he was planning to create a greater Russia that was something like the former Soviet Union. And that's in large part because he didn't have the capabilities. Barry and Stephen Morrow have gone over this in considerable detail. This is a country that has a GNP the size of Texas. I mean, come on. Do you really think that the Soviet Union is coming back and is going to be on the beaches of Dunkirk in 48 hours like we used to worry about during the Cold War? This is not serious, right? Again, it was NATO that was moving not the Russians that were moving west. And if you look at the military operations in Ukraine, this does not look like a campaign to me that's designed to conquer all of Ukraine. People talk about a blitzkrieg. This ain't a blitzkrieg. I don't see any panzer divisions racing across the country. When I run a blitzkrieg, 
thing I do is go around obstacles. I go around the obstacles and I avoid cities. I get out in the open plains and I run those panzer divisions as fast as I can. And I conquer the whole country. It doesn't look to me like that's what's happening in Ukraine. No evidence that he plans to incorporate all of Ukraine into a greater Russia. So I think that you folks were wrong in two very important ways. One is you didn't understand that you were dealing with Imperial America, that the Steve Brookses and Bill Wolforths of the world and the John Eikenberries of the world had won, right? And, and, and their arguments had deep roots, right? And furthermore, you greatly overrated, you greatly overrated the Russian threat because you needed a threat to keep us there, right? And you greatly overrated the Russian threat. So the bottom line is, where are we today? Well, the good news for you is we're there forever, right? You should really be happy about that. We're there forever. The bad news for you is we're in a major war, right? NATO's not directly involved yet, but they're mighty close. We might get sucked in. And by the way, nuclear weapons might be used. Have you thought about that? Have you thought about that? This is what your policies have led to. Uh, this is not a happy story. And I would just say, if we had won the debate, and there was no chance of that again, I want you to understand, we didn't stand a fighting chance. But if we had won, there'd be no war today. Crimea would be part of Ukraine. The Donbass would be part of Ukraine. It would not be a perfect world. But in my humble opinion, it would be a hell of a lot better world than we have because your ideas and Steve's ideas have been implemented and have won the day. Thank you.